It has been quite some time since I sat in front of this camera to do a actual discussion video for you guys. I want to apologize a little bit for that. It's been hectic. It's been a little bit, you know, hard getting around to doing things, especially when I was up in New Hampshire and busy. But I'm here, and I'm going to be doing a video for all of you. Before I get into this though, I want to say if you haven't been by the channel lately, you probably haven't noticed that I have a new banner. My buddy Christian Alicia has done a new banner for my channel for me and it looks pretty swanky. So when you get an opportunity, go by and check it out. Also, since you clicked on this video, you probably noticed that there was a nice little thumbnail. That was done by my buddy Kevin. I'm going to try to increase my production value ever so slightly now, but I don't have a new PC yet, so I can't do any kind of editing. I want to eventually be able to edit, put in clips, put in, you know, photos and put in music and do all that stuff that I used to try to do, but I can't do it quite yet. But I do have a thumbnail and I do have a new banner, so that's nice. I also have a new tunified Brett because the other one was kind of creepy. Either way, you already know exactly what this discussion video is going to be about. I don't usually talk about movies. I think the last time I really consistently discussed a movie was when I was bitching about World War Z. But today I want to talk about It. 2017's It. The Stephen King film adaptation. So, before I get into talking about the 2017 version, I just want to quickly address the old TV miniseries, which I don't know why they called it a miniseries when it's just two parts. But we all know about the old TV show, uh, TV miniseries, It, with, you know, Tim Curry portraying Pennywise. I watched that when I was little. When I was little, it did scare me. As I've gotten older, I found it to be more funny than frightening. But let's just say that that is classic. It's not going anywhere. You can't really, you, you can't wash it away. It's it's ingrained into our psyche. It's 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 good. It's fine. It hasn't held up as, as well as I would have hoped, but it's still there and nobody's going to make it go away. I just wanted to address that real quick because there are some individuals out there that probably don't like this new movie. I can't see why, but... I just wanted to say I have seen the old one. I've never read the book, but I have I have watched the old miniseries, and it's it's good. It's fine. This one's better, but it's fine. Anywho, I wanted to go over this film because I went the other night and watched it, and you know I was apprehensive at first, hearing that they were going to be doing a new adaptation of this this book, and and, and I I was worried because you know Hollywood these days doesn't have a great track record. What would the adaptations and the uh, remakes and all the things they do these days, you get a little worried as to what it is they can produce. But from the actor's standpoint, the directorial standpoint, everything about this new 2017 It is fantastic. It's darker, it's more visceral, it's more frightening, and I enjoyed it from beginning to end. And I, I haven't enjoyed a, a movie in a while, especially one that's trying to be scary. Like, there have been a glut of really shit scary movies coming out, and it just, it kills me. But this, however, was a cut above the rest. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about it briefly. I don't want to spoil anything for you, however, near the end of the video, I am going to go over spoilers content. But overall, if you haven't seen the film and you don't want to watch my movie, my video on YouTube, go see it. It is worth a ticket price. Go watch it in theaters. You will have a great time. First and foremost, the thing that I think sets this new 2017 film apart from its predecessor is tone. It's a lot darker. And I don't just mean like, you know, lighting effects. I mean, everything about this is grittier, it's more visceral, it's more disturbing. It's just a much darker type of film. What I'm going to talk about in the, the next few moments isn't spoilerish because it's at the beginning of the movie and we all know it's going to happen. If you've seen the original, you know it's going to happen. This is not spoiler stuff here. However, the Georgie scene in this adaptation is much worse than the Georgie scene of the original with Tim Curry. Now, we all know Georgie is going to die. We're all aware of that. However, in the original film, you know, Georgie reached in, Pennywise grabbed him, you'll float too! And all it showed was the teeth and the eyes, and then it cut away. This one is slightly different. 
If you've seen the promotional material or any of the clips, you know that Pennywise has a discussion with Georgie. They talk about balloons, they talk about the boat, but what you're probably not aware of is that the conversation goes on a lot longer than anything we've seen in the promotional material, which I was rather pleased with. I have always enjoyed, you know, when it's fiction or it's horror, I've always enjoyed, you know, the monsters and the way they act, the way they speak, and the way they, they lure their prey in. And so hearing Pennywise talk with Georgie about the carnival and the popcorn and all the things that he said, you know, leading Georgie into what would eventually happen was entertaining for me. You can really see a malevolence about this version of Pennywise. He's a lot different than Tim Curry's portrayal. His makeup is different. His hair is different. The clothes are certainly different. He is much more of a Victorian era clown. It makes him, instead of looking like some modern day, just, oh, uh, clown, it makes him look like he's something that's been a around for a long, long time. But when he's luring Georgie in, it's just so fascinating to see. And of course, you know, he, he knows the kid's name, which if I were a child and somebody knew my name, especially a fucking clown I'd never seen, I'd be concerned. But he knows his name, he knows his brother's name, and there's one moment like, don't you want your boat back? Your brother will kill you. And, and Georgie reaches in, Again, in the original film adaptation, when, when Pennywise grabbed him, it just showed the teeth and cut away. Not in this version. This clown opens its mouth, the teeth come out, and he takes a chunk of this kid's arm and tears it off of his body. You see the kid recoil in pain. His arm is gone. And he's desperately trying to crawl away in the rain. And this was the most messed up part. You see an overhead view of the clown's hand reaching out, grabbing him and pulling him back into the storm drain. And that, that was just... That really set the tone. That showed that this Pennywise is a lot different than the previous version we've seen. It was darker. It was more horrific. And for me as an adult, especially one that's dealt with children a lot, my mother teaches, I was babysitting Gabriel up in New Hampshire, it's really just a punch in the gut. Because we're so used to, in films these days, kids not getting hurt. I mean, I recently watched Transformers um, The Last Night, and you've got that kid and a bunch of other kids running around. Nothing bad happens to those children. However, in this film, bad things happen to kids a lot. It's not just the Georgie scene. There are other scenes, bad things happening to, um, I can't remember the fat kid's name. I should remember. One of them is called Bill. I think it's Bill. Anywho, the, 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 the things that happens to that kid, the things that happens to the little black boy, the things that just keep happening to children. Oh man, it's so messed up. It's so much darker and it, it doesn't really cut away. Um, not spoilerish. Kind of spoilers. The bullies, you all know the bullies. Well, the dude literally cuts one of the kids, and I didn't expect that. I understand the monster will eat people, but this this psychotic fucking child or teenager, whatever, young teenager, takes his knife and carves an H into the fat kid's stomach, and I'm like, fuck. Like I'm, when I was little, I was the fat kid with the knife. Don't mess with me, I'll stab you. But like that's very visceral and very dark, and everything about this movie does that. The kids. At least the Losers Club, the group of kids who are our protagonists, the, those kids seem to be the only people in the town that aren't fucked in the head. Okay? From the, from the mother of one of the children who is just creepy, to the pharmaceutical guy, to the uncle of the little black boy, everybody just seems to have a lot of problems. There is something very wrong in Derry, and it all probably stems from Pennywise. But I, I just found the overall tone much darker in a good way. There is some stuff in here that will make you uncomfortable. For instance, the plot lines with Beverly and her father made me squirm in my seat. I, I, I'm not comfortable with that kind of shit. Like, I don't want to spoil, but it's just, what did he do? He makes me uncomfortable. I'm getting out last two flashbacks. Anywho, the, the tone of this film is much darker in a good way. And I really enjoyed how it didn't pull its punches. The, the, the gore and stuff like that, okay, yeah, it's fine. But the fact that, you know, the fact that you see Pennywise bite this kid's arm off instead of cutting away, it really shows that they're not pulling punches. Anybody can have a bad day in this film. And it's pretty freaking good.
mentioned the Losers Club. The Losers Club, of course, is our group of protagonists, the children. And most of them are seeing horrific things because Pennywise is basically hunting them. Now, if you've watched, you know, a bunch of YouTube videos, no doubt you've come across Nostalgia Critic's review of the original It. And I like the video. I like Nostalgia Critic. No bad things against him. But I, I remember one part he just bitches about, why doesn't he just kill these kids? There's a reason for that. Now, if you're wondering what Pennywise is, please don't go looking into the lore. Like, if you don't know what Pennywise is, because I know, because my mother reads the fucking books, if you don't know what Pennywise is, don't go looking through the lore because it's going to be a lot of confusing shit. With dead lights, with ancient godlike entities, don't get me started on the fucking turtle. Just view Pennywise as an ancient evil entity that feeds on fear. And the reason he doesn't just straight up kill the kids unfortunately Georgie wasn't this lucky, is because he likes to scare them. And the more afraid they are, the better they taste. I mean, you know, the, the way he treats Georgie, it's kind of like just getting, you know, some McDonald's. But when he's scaring the children and making them see the horrific shit they're seeing, it's basically him just, you know, sauteing the meat. That's what he's doing. He's added some sauce. He's he's put some garnish on that. He's got a side of potatoes. I'm hungry. It's it's how he, he makes them taste better. They taste better when they're afraid. But uh, the children are seeing horrific things. And some of these things, you know, like I, I remember the things they saw in the original... Uh, um, Tim Curry style film. You know, there was the one who was afraid of the Wolfman. There was the one who was afraid of the Mummy. Those were, of course, you know, nods to classic horror films. But in this one, there are some things that are more in line with the book. For instance, one of the children, who is a hypochondriac and he's scared of germs, sees a leper, and the leper chases him through this creepy yard, and it's 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 an interesting scene. There's actually a lot of chase scenes throughout this, which I thought was pretty interesting and kept it with a thriller vibe. Uh, the one heavy set kid actually gets chased by a headless, burning, smoldering body through a library, which was again creepy. A lot of the things that 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 Pennywise transforms into to scare the children are things that I didn't necessarily expect. And there are, of course, differences from the original with this one. No doubt you know that in the original they look through a book and uh, Pennywise scares them with the book. However, in this one, since it's set in the 80s, they look through a uh, film projector. And I'll be honest, again, the promotional material doesn't show you everything that happens. There is some shit that happens after the reveal of him with the hair and shit that I did not expect. My mother was sitting next to me and she jumped out of her fucking seat. It's very good at startling you. It's very good at putting you on, on, you know, you know, it makes you uneasy. But, um, he shows them these horrific things and they start to realize that he, he does exist. And the, the whole point of the film is them trying to basically band together and stop him. One thing that I've always enjoyed about it is the fact that the film's overall to me, I don't know if this is what Stephen King intended, the film's overall thesis is overcoming your fear. That's that's the big factor about it. Because Pennywise, to be perfectly honest, he can just kill you. He can just kill you. But, he, he doesn't have as much power when you're not afraid of him. He is a monster. He will fucking kill you and eat you. But at the same time, you not being afraid of him screws with his ability to do the things that he does. And this, of course, comes into uh, the, the film you'll see when you watch it. But... Overall, I, I enjoyed this thoroughly. I, I think it's actually a really good film. If you haven't gotten an opportunity to go th to go see it yet, I really recommend you go see it because it is just, it is so fantastic. This portrayal of Pennywise is pitch perfect. I enjoyed thoroughly watching as the kids came together and, and overcame their fears and, and tried to fight back against it. And it was, it was just really, really interesting to me. I enjoyed the film thoroughly. I, I want you to go see it. I have recommended it to my friends. I posted on Facebook about it. If you get an opportunity to see it, go see it. Because it's damn good and worth a ticket price. However, what I'm going to talk about next is spoiler stuff. So, do stay tuned. So, I want to talk about a few spoilerish things. I didn't want to go over too much of this because, quite frankly... I, I, I want you to see this. So if you're still watching this, know that I'm about to talk about spoilerish things. Things are going to be spoiled. If you don't care, or you don't have intentions of seeing the film, or you do have intentions of seeing the film, but you just want to hear my spoilers, or you've already seen the film and you want to hear what I liked, keep watching. But if you want to see the movie and you don't want spoils, stop watching. All right, so <laughs> my favorite scene in the film is definitely 
the projector scene. And it was funny because, like I said again, my mother was sitting next to me and she literally jumped when it happened. The projector scene plays out like you've seen in all the promotional material. However, when uh, they knock the projector over and it starts flashing on the wall, one time it flashes and he's just there. Although he's not completely there. He's kind of like halfway there. It's a manifestation of him. Anywho, he's massive. He's huge, and he has his teeth out, and it's fucking freaky looking. And he literally scares the shit out of the kids until they're able to open the garage door, but he's literally crawling on all fours, coming at Beverly. And it was just a really freaky scene overall. I, I, I didn't talk about this, but when it comes down to it, the CG and stuff in the film really helps to amplify the, 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 the fear of this creature. There's one scene where they first confront him, and they can't beat him, of course, but they're fighting him. And Beverly literally stabs him through the head with uh, some rusty, I think it was a rusty piece of a fence. Anywho, it's a fucking spike, a spear. She stabs him through the head. And the CG, like, the way it looks, one of his eyes is just ruined. But his other eye is there and his, his face, his mouth starts to <coughs> with the teeth and shit. Oh, man, I just, I love the teeth. I, I think the teeth are fantastic. But, um... The CG and the things they did, for instance, the fridge scene. If you go on YouTube right now, you can see the fridge scene where he literally opens up a refrigerator and he's all contorted and up in there and he just kind of unravels and twists and his whole torso spins around. And this is at one moment where one of the children has fallen through the floor and literally broken his arm. He's hurt, he's on the ground, he can't get, he can't get away. And it, it was at this moment after the fridge, after he uncoils, that he's literally mocking the kid. The kid has asthma and he's... <gasps> And he's grabbing the kid, and he's fucking, he's mocking him, and I think the, the best part is the kid starts slapping him. The kid starts slapping Pennywise, and he grabs his hand, and he's like, ah, ah. And it's so funny, he's like, time to float. And he's going to eat the kid, and it's so great. I love this Pennywise. He's so malevolent and sinister, but I, I, I. I find him interesting, just the way he is, and the way he communicates as well. He's he's intelligent. He's been doing this for God, what thousands of years? You know, eating people. He's he's very good at what he does by now. But he also really loves to scare the shit out of them. And and, and let's see another spoilerish moment. So I mentioned very briefly. If you don't know what Pennywise is, I, I don't want to go into it because it's really complicated and really stupid. Just consider Pennywise to be an ancient entity that is evil, that feeds on fear. But they did show the deadlights in this. And if you Google what the deadlights are, you're in for a lot of fucking shit. But there's one moment where Pennywise has captured Beverly. And she's down in his lair. And he has her. And of course this scene takes place right after the goofiest scene in the movie where Pennywise dances. Which is funny and creepy. You'll see what I mean when you watch it. But um, he has Beverly, and she's like, I'm not afraid of you. And he's like, you will be. And he opens his mouth. And the neat thing is, he has these, uh, these markings that go up his eyes. Well, his eyes roll back in his head, and his whole fucking face opens up, and there's just teeth. And deep down in his throat, you see the deadlights. Now, I'm not going to explain what the deadlights are, but let's just say it is a manifestation, a representation of pure terror. You look into the deadlights, and you see shit that is so scary, it makes you go crazy. What it does in this adaptation though is it makes her eyes turn gray and she's she's just she's gone and he la literally lets her go and she starts floating because of course in, in the original he talked about balloons and talked about floating and in this one they made it so that you know the kids are floating he has this little ring of children in his lair that are floating I guess they're snacks for later but I thought that the deadlights was interesting and I thought that his whole fucking face opening up was pretty interesting too. But uh, overall, there was just a lot of cool stuff. But I think the thing that was the biggest problem is I, I laughed out loud a lot during this film. When I was in the theater, I laughed out loud. And the one scene that made me laugh out loud that I'm going to leave you guys on is the funniest fucking thing I've seen in this entire movie. There's a moment where the bullies are being bad to the little black boy. I can't remember his name. I think it's Henry. I think his name is Henry. Anywho, there's a moment where they're... they're they're bullying him, and they he 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 works on a uh, he he works with his uh, uncle, you know, with sheep and with meat and things like that. And they're pushing his face into raw meat and you know harassing him. And there's one moment where he they're they're on a riverside. He looks up and he sees Pennywise basically off in the bushes, and he he's got blood all over his face and he was like gnawing on an arm. But he looks up and he sees him and he waves the fucking hand at him, and I was just like. 
I laughed out loud in the theater with him waving the fucking severed hand at the black kid while the black kid's being harassed and they can't see the Pennywise. They can't see Pennywise yet. And I was just like, what the fuck? It's so fucking funny. Okay, because I've got a dark sense of humor. So a, a lot of this movie just made me laugh. And I also enjoy Pennywise so much. So I was laughing through a lot of it. But just because I laughed at it, just because I messed up and dead on the inside, doesn't mean you shouldn't see it. If you watched and, and, and heard me talk about some of the spoilerish stuff, that's fine. But I still think you should go see it. If you haven't seen Stephen King's 2017 It, you need to go see it. Because it is worth watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you go see the film. If you have seen the film, what did you think about it? I know, again, one of my subscribers said it's his favorite film this year. Let me know what you thought about Stephen King's It. If you enjoyed my video, give me a thumbs up. However, if you hated my video and you want me to float down the river after you stab me, dislike the video. Take care, everybody.